So how many of you have had this happen to you? You bought into the hype and then once you bought into the hype, it starts dumping because you were simply too late to the party. What if I told you there was an indicator that you could use in order to minimize the chances of such a thing happening to you and instead maximize the chances that whatever degen coin you are playing with, it is more likely that you are early than you are late. What is going on everyone and welcome back to the Baking Analyst channel. Today we're going to be talking about a new indicator that is barely being talked about in this space that actually tells us whether or not there is a potential of capital flowing in to your favorite crypto ecosystems. This has huge ramifications whether you are a degen investor or you're just investing in layer one coins because after all, all these coins need inflow of money in order to be pumped. Let's jump right into today's video. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the conceptual understanding behind this indicator. So we've all seen headlines like this, stock market dumping because of the end of the Fed put, i.e. the Fed has stopped giving out free money and is raising interest rates. You're probably wondering, what does this have to do with this? So the idea behind it is that just like stocks that need new capital injection from investors who have received, say, the stimulus checks in order to appreciate in value against the US dollar, cryptocurrencies also need an inflow of capital or an inflow of stable coins in order to increase in price like this. So when deciding which layer ones or which ecosystems to go into, you might want to check this very indicator that will tell you exactly how much external or exogenous capital is lying on the sidelines as compared to the amount that's actually invested within that ecosystem. So mainly we will be focusing on chains that have USDC that's actually backed by Circle or that are imminently going to get that support. And those include your favorite layer twos such as Optimism and Arbitrum. And if you've been playing around with the ZK EVM test nets, that is also likely to come to say the likes of ZK Sync. What we see here that is particularly interesting is not actually just the ranking or the trends of TVL or even the TVL to market cap, but rather it is the comparison of stables to overall TVL. The idea behind this is simple. If you want to pump native coins within an ecosystem, you need stables to enter that ecosystem in order to drive prices up. Because after all, coins are traded as pairs. They are not traded in isolation or valued in isolation. They are, as we see over here, priced in relation to USD. In order for that USD value to go up, USD must be sold against that token. So the first principles argument for this is that if the amount of stables within that chain or within that ecosystem is greater than the total value locked, meaning all the value that's currently staked in a yield farm, be it in degen, liquidity mining protocols, native tokens, or even stable farms, you can bet that the majority of capital on that particular chain is still sitting on the sidelines waiting to be deployed. So this could be useful for instance, to measure the speculative multiplier, if you may, or speculative ratio of various chains if you're into this kind of stuff. So looking at this, we do see that Arbitrum, which has been really, really hot lately, has 927 million of stables and 1.14 billion in total value lock. So it's kind of halfway down the line, quite a bit of the stable coin supply has been deployed into the native ecosystem. So while the crypto market pumping might lead to various gains within the Arbitrum, Arbitrum ecosystem, you might already not be the earliest in this race. Another example to discuss is Optimism. Optimism has been pumping lately. As you can see, they are up quite a bit just in the past month alone. And if you've been holding on to OP tokens, definitely congratulations to you. But the idea is there must be a lot of USDC or stables going in to buy the OP token, speculating ahead of Airdrop 2. And the reason for that is because they did this whole quest thing until Jan January 17th, where people were speculating that playing all these quests would grant you an airdrop, and that hasn't been confirmed yet. But nonetheless, speculation is speculation. So again, we see that the stables amount is less than the total value lock. So we are starting to see a pattern over here. Whereas in other chains like Polygon, there are still about close to 2 billion sitting on the sidelines, not locked on a yield farm or anything, and not deployed. The same can be said for Binance chain as well as Ethereum. 
So this concept is very, very similar to the idea of looking at the amount of stablecoin supply on exchanges, because the idea is there is that much supply waiting to be deployed. Now, that is not to say you will be late on Arbitrum or Optimism, in my opinion, because those figures are still relatively close together. What you don't want to do, however, is to ape in to the total value locked pool when the amount of stables on the other side is relatively low, meaning that the chain's growth is already reaching some sort of plateau or limit, and that huge upside is unlikely without injection of further stablecoin capital from various chains or bridging. And the reason why I thought this was a really good one to bring up was because even though you can bring in stables through bridging, liquidity tends to be sticky unless there's a huge opportunity on a brand new chain that is relatively safe and paying hundreds of percents of APR. Otherwise, people like you and me would simply not be interested in going through all that fuss of bridging. So now I have yet another indicator to look at when you're deciding what DeFi ecosystems or projects to go into. But even though you now have this knowledge, you still want to have some fundamental understanding of what you're investing in, as well as the top narratives in the space. And to do that, you can check out this video over here, where we talk about exactly that, the top narratives of 2023 that you should be aware of. With all that being said, if you found this video of value, do consider leaving a like, subscribing to this channel, and hitting the bell button so you do not miss another upload. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next